Good morning. Thank you for keeping it white in the morning only on channel white to fight for. Again, my humble apologies. It's just the, I got rained on, on the, over the weekend and, and I'm struggling a little bit. But please, please do bear with me. I will do my utmost best to do this very, very well or as best as I can. Now, a couple of things has happened over the weekend, including but not limited to the CAF games have been ongoing. And I watched two games on Friday night, I think. That was Tanzania and Uganda and Nigeria and New Guinea, if I'm not wrong. I think the Nigerian New Guinea one was a lot faster than the Uganda Tanzanian one, if you know what I mean by faster and slower. Yes. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We are now on youth and politics. And as a member of the Fourth Estate, we are going to keep this as balanced as possible without fear or favor. Let's get into it. So, I'm not even introduced myself, have I? <laughs> My name is Valentine, or at Color Me Bad. So I'm very, very excited about today's conversation. Let me allow my panelists to also say something. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Fine. I sound small like a frog, but you, you'll do more of the talking for me, right? Okay. Yes. All okay. right, please introduce yourself to the people. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ivan Skipkwari Sarem. Mm -hmm. Born and brought up in Kericho. Mm -hmm the slopes of Rift Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm the chairperson of Kericho, student, Kericho University Students Association, mm -hmm. and also a student leader at Kabaraki University. Mm -hmm. I'm privileged to be here. Wow, you're, you're quite impressive. Thank you. All right, and sir? Once again, good morning. Uh -huh. Don't uh, once again, you have just entered the scene. That one you. was behind the tent. Oh. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm Kitanuki Prop Edgar mm -hmm. from the Rift Valley Institute of mm -hmm. Science and Technology, mm -hmm. Nakuru Main Campus, the student president of the year 2023. Mm -hmm. Arvist is a major school, best in performance and best in discipline. Mm -hmm. I come from Rift Valley, that is Wasingishu County, Soikot Situency, and Kipsombe Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a pleasure to be today live in the Y254. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. No, I'll thank you for making an appearance. So before we move forward, this is the to actually the topic is the state of the nation. So we're trying to understand what is happening and also leaning very heavily on the youth because it's youth and politics. So when we started the show, my counterpart, Stephanie Eta, asked me and Brian Sakwa how our weekend was. And I told her mine was a bit more social. So I've, I've been talking to people on the ground and then like, oh, what are you doing on Monday? I'm like, I mean, I'm working. You, what are you doing? I'm like, you're working on a Monday. You're sure? <laughs> yeah, so how is the ground to you? What, what, what are the youth saying about now currently Monday and now Thursday has been offered up also as another day to subsequently have these protests? Maybe you can start. Thank you. <laughs> uh, as of now, the nation is mixed up because, mm -hmm. you know, we have some saying this is the way to go and some saying this is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. We must air our views through throwing stones mm -hmm. and the rest are saying no, mm -hmm. that's a dark past. Mm -hmm. We shall not air our views through throwing stones. Mm -hmm. But as we speak today, I can see the nation is more of calm. Mm -hmm. Even as I drove in earlier this morning, mm -hmm. the nation was calm. Mm -hmm. And the youth everywhere are some have gone to their side assaults, some class, mm -hmm. some schools, and only a few mm -hmm. are in the streets. Mm -hmm. But it's a smaller percentage, not uh, that bigger percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel that the ground is right now? Uh, personally, at my own level, mm -hmm. I feel from my ground, the country is at peace. Mm -hmm. uh, why should I say so? This is not affecting uh, the whole country. Mm -hmm. It is majorly a few regions mm -hmm. and uh, personally from where I come that is Nakuru mm -hmm. and even Eldred. It is just calm. Mm -hmm. Youths are engaged in just as normal. Mm -hmm. So I can say this is just affecting some parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And if you compare the first reaction to this of, the, of today, there is a little bit better man. The first one was a bit worse. Mm -hmm. But this one I see, I think it has come to common sense that People must just work, mm -hmm. people must just go for their work, mm -hmm. people must just hustle. Mm -hmm. So because this uh, they see as a wasting of time mm -hmm. and uh, in no longer there will be no any return. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So personally, I see the country is just moving on well, except a few parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think uh, what is happening in the nation right now is, is tearing us apart as youths? Because you have one side, uh, actually um, the Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. had penned a late night letter that was yesterday, dated yesterday for today, and he alleged, a couple, he alleged a couple of things, and one being that rowdy youth have been recruited to mix seamlessly with Azimio supporters to cause chaos, and he pointed Western and Nyanza and Nairobi. But on the flip side, where the government is concerned, Inspector General Jafet Kome ha said the, the said protests have been banned, and uh, this is countrywide. And he was very insistent on that there's m the most security officers to ensure safety for all, which is definitely something I saw when I was coming to work today. I saw there was a lot of a lot more increased security in wherever I was passing through. So I can only imagine this is translating to the rest of the country as well. Do you think it's tearing us apart that? As a youth, am I supposed to listen to this person or this person? Am I supposed to follow the rule of law? Do I even have a choice because, you know, no one is above the law? What do you think it's doing to us as youths? On the issue of the youths being torn apart, mm -hmm. I view it as this manda mano thing is uh, some sort of jeopardizing our unity mm -hmm. as youths. Mm -hmm. Because you'll find there are some youths who are on the flip side of the of the page and you will find there are some on this side but lucky enough the youth of the 21st century they cannot be torn apart by such things because when you are a youth and possibly let me say more so of a comrade because mm -hmm. those are the people i interact with them much of my, my time mm -hmm. Yes, some may go to Manda Mano and some will not go. But once they come back in mm -hmm. the evening mm -hmm. after those events, they are one thing. Mm -hmm. They are one, united as one. Mm -hmm. And they will not accept at any point such Manda Manos to tear them apart. Mm -hmm. But in as much as we are agitating for the unity of our nation, mm -hmm. the youth should desist. Mm -hmm because there are better ways of airing views and conflicts mm -hmm. in as much as the constitution recognizes a demonstration mm -hmm. peaceful demonstration sorry and uh, picketing mm -hmm. the youths involved in that in those peaceful demonstrations should take part in the peaceful demonstrations mm -hmm. and not let them not jeopardize their unity with the rest of the youths mm -hmm. because at the end mm -hmm. we shall be one youth and one Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I want to ask you the same question, but now backing it up with what I am seeing here mm -hmm. on the people. This is the front page of the People Daily. So we have a fresh storm over Raila mass action. So police warn they will arrest organizers as Raila and Karua dare them to make good the threat. Kindiki, that is Kithore Kindiki, warns opposition will be surcharged for damage to property. Then Ruto leaves for Germany, but not Kenya, says he will still be held responsible. So you have two pictures there, back to back, or side to side rather. Then one of them is Azimir Lide Raila Denga addresses a church service at Jesus Teaching Ministry in Nairobi yesterday when he said the weekly protests to pile pressure on government over high cost of living and electoral justice are still on despite police warning. And then, as if irony is not enough, then on the side is Inspector General of Police Jafet Kome and Nairobi Regional Police Commander Adamson Bungay during yesterday's press conference at police headquarters in Nairobi, during which the IG banned today's Azimio protests. What is this message sending to the youth? Personally, hmm. I don't believe in demonstration. Oh, really? I believe in dialogue. Uh -huh. Demonstration is a thing of the past. Secondly, demonstration is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So having the youth going to the streets, demonstrating, at the end of the day, they come back without even a 50 shilling. That one is an totally no achievement. Mm -hmm. So on the side of having demonstrations in our country, like we are leading very many number of comrades. I can imagine all those comrades from different universities, different institutions, joining in a in a demonstration mm -hmm. at the end of the day learning will have gone behind 
at the end of the day, one would have been in, get injured, we start again having some expenses. And why should I say I believe in dialogue? Mm. Personally, demonstrations to me is uh, something like not clean. It is an unclean thing. Mm. And having our country, like having some people saying we need to go for a demonstration just because the cost of living has gone high, we need to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. where did the cost of living start? It started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, we must go back to the roots mm -hmm. because it did not start now. Mm -hmm. That means there was some mess in the past leaders. Mm -hmm. So we cannot come now and say the cost of living has gone high. Mm -hmm. It started somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we need to go back and try to check what can we eliminate. Which number of our leaders in the serving in our country, if for example we have very many of them, mm -hmm. we can have some seats being sacrificed mm -hmm. so that we avoid much payment, much wasting of resources. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so demonstration to me is a thing of the past. I don't encourage in any institution, any university, mm -hmm. because I believe in demonstration, <coughs> not even 90% can be solved. Mm -hmm. So dialogue is always the best thing. Mm -hmm. I could have encouraged our leaders to have a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, let us agree here. Why is the cost of living high? Let us pull it down. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you saw our... In, in fact, we have one of our students who was injured. Mm -hmm. He's a comrade mm -hmm. by a bullet. Mm -hmm. We have other several, one inch. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there's, there's nothing they will achieve. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage always is dialogue. Mm -hmm. Wherever in our country, wherever in an institution, like for example the institution I come from, I can encourage comrades to do a strike mm -hmm. or to run up carrying twigs and uh, causing chaos in the school. Mm -hmm. It is I normally encourage dialogue. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Let us say this and this. And I believe when there is a dialogue and an agreement, mm -hmm. everything will go on smoothly. Mm -hmm. So for our country, I feel so unfortunate for demonstration because it is rampant, mm -hmm. it, is bringing, uh, it is bringing down our transport system, wasting our time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just need to go back to the drawing board. Where did the cost of living started rising? Mm -hmm. That is the question. You look like you have something to tell me. You want no. to say something on the same? Yeah. Talk to me. I want to echo what my brother said. Mm -hmm. There are better ways of solving conflict. Mm -hmm. And if we have really opted for demonstration, let it be peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I want to call upon each and every youth mm -hmm. who might be involved in today's demonstration or next week demonstrations or any other coming demonstration. Mm -hmm. If really you must be involved in that demonstration, which we really, which I really do not believe in it. Mm -hmm. Just make it peaceful and avoid the uncut nature, mm -hmm. the throwing of stones. Make it peaceful mm -hmm. because the constitution calls for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To add on something, Val, yes, if I can. Yes, please. Uh, demonstrations to me mm -hmm. is a thing that is just not good. Why should I say so? Mm -hmm. This is because. We have seen our youths. We know that in the current world, the youths are the majority. Mm -hmm. And the youths are the most confused when it comes to a time of being influenced. Mm -hmm. Why should I say being influenced? Like saying, le let me give you a credit of 50, then you do this. So they will do it at the end of the day. They will come and regret. Mm -hmm. I was given a credit of 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, I've spoiled things. I've got injured myself. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you are given a hundred shillings to mm -hmm. do a demonstration now, and you come back being shot with a bullet, what will be the cost of your treatment? Mm -hmm. So personally, I encourage youths not to participate in such activities. Mm -hmm. We just need a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like in our country, I can encourage, like we have our women rep, they can speak for the women. Mm -hmm. We have our MPs, they can speak also for the male side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have the youth representatives in our country, booked from even counties and regionals. Mm -hmm. They can agitate issues that are favoring the youth. Mm -hmm. Like for example now, what can lead to a demonstration in youths? Like for example, the students now, mm -hmm. who we call ourselves in quotes, comrades. Mm -hmm. Like when there is an issue of maybe delayed help, 
you see, that one is what can agitate for some demonstration. Mm -hmm. But when there is a dialogue, oh, the help delayed just because of this and this, but it is going to come. Mm -hmm. They will be free and they will feel there's something coming. So I just believe in talking and dialogue, dialogue and agreement. Mm -hmm. That is the best solution of a disagreement. Okay, I, what I'm hearing is you feel like we are shortchanging ourselves. We are doing the most for very, very little and exactly. possibly insignificant exactly. shifts, yes. Let me add something mm -hmm. on that. You know, politics is about interest. Mm -hmm. Even the, you remember the disciples told Jesus mm -hmm. when he picked them at the, when they were fishing. He told them, the disciples told Jesus, now we are leaving our nets. Mm -hmm. What is in it for us? Mm -hmm. So even these people who are demonstrating, and especially the youths, mm -hmm. they are doing it not because uh, they are being pushed or what. They are doing so because mm -hmm. they know at the end of it there is something mm -hmm. for us. And even the leaders who are leading the, this whole hula baloo, mm -hmm. they are doing it with an aim of something. Because as I had said earlier, politics is about interests. Mm -hmm. And somebody is saying, how will I get this thing? How will I get to this position? Mm -hmm. I must go this way. Some, I must go the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me just ask you. Mm -hmm. One of the demands of the opposition is mm -hmm. the reduction of the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. But do you think it, it ties in very neatly into unemployment? Because who is going out on the streets? And a couple of Mondays ago, we had very alarming statistics on set, the tune of 10.1 million people in the country not employed, and 2.5 million actively hunting, actively job hunting. Are these the people who are ta being targeted or being influenced, as we are trying to say or suggest? As that now, it's true the cost of living is high. And uh, it's good for the opposition to rise up and say the cost of living is high. And on the other side again, we have seen the government trying, doing all what it takes mm -hmm. to bring down the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on research and the several things the president has been doing, mm -hmm. we can see it's promising. Mm -hmm. But again on the other side, you know, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And when you tell me wait for six months, mm -hmm. What will I eat? Mm -hmm. What will I be doing? Mm -hmm. Comrades, so they are crying. They are saying, where is our help loan? So there is a lot of startup in our, in our nation at the moment. Mm -hmm. You have each and everyone pulling on their side. And none of them is doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I can say so. Mm -hmm. In as much as the affairs of the nation is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Because each and every one, both leaders from the other side and this side, mm -hmm. all of them are representing the interests of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But again, we must view it in a certain perspective mm -hmm. as a nation. Mm -hmm. Where are we heading to? Mm -hmm. Is it really promising? Mm -hmm. Is the cost of living going to come down, mm -hmm. as we are being told? Mm -hmm. And on the other side again, if they do picketing and demonstration, mm -hmm. They demonstrate today. Mm -hmm. Will the cost of living come down? It's a very good question. That's the question mm -hmm. we must ask ourselves today. Mm -hmm. And in any case, it is said, mm -hmm. each and every citizen should take part in uh, their democratic right of electing their leaders. Mm -hmm. And I believe the millions of Kenyans who came out to exercise their rights to elect their leaders, they all had a view. You, if you remember, both candidates were nearly the same. Mm -hmm. Like we had 7 million, 7 million, oh, 7 million, 6.8 million. Mm -hmm. Those are all Kenyans who had a view of if we elect this person, mm -hmm. it will represent our interests. Mm -hmm. And today, the vast majority of them some are shocked that the cost of living has not yet come down. Mm -hmm. And some are not shocked. They are saying, indeed, this government is promising. Mm -hmm. Do you get the point? Mm -hmm. So today the question I'm asking, mm -hmm. if we do demonstration, mm -hmm. will the cost of living come down? Mm -hmm. 
and again on the other side. If the opposition does not put in toss the mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. will the government do what it takes to bring down the cost of living? Mm -hmm. So that's the question we must ask ourselves, mm -hmm. the two questions. If the opposition does not stop the does not stop demonstration, mm -hmm. will the government take up its role mm -hmm. in taking care of Kenyans? Mm -hmm. And indeed the opposition is very good. It keeps on toss on the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're saying one faculty depends on the other. Yeah, so we are interdependent. Keep them in check a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Right. Can I just tie it before okay. you, I can see you have something to say? I, I just want to tie another question. Mm -hmm. And he said something very significant, and I believe you also mentioned it that the cost of living did not magically rise mm. after the previous elections that we yeah. had. Mm. And I believe that we understand when COVID nineteen struck, it it, it did affected the whole world. It mm -hmm. was a global pandemic and yes. no government was prepared for it. Mm -hmm. No one had contingency plans on, on how to, you know, support itself during this time. We had to cut each other off for the longest time, no traveling. That means no exports, no imports. And we, it was just a, just a very hard time, mm. to be quite honest, a very, very terrible time. And now we're seeing the effects, the ripple effects, all the way up to 2023. Yes, and, and we can't really pinpoint and say this government or this this person did this in this particular sector, this cabinet actually did this, this member of parliament, this one in charge of this did this. But we can see it has been a wave. Is it possible maybe as Kenyans we open our minds to see we're not the only ones suffering? I like to believe every house has its own problems. As Kenyans, we have our problems. But have you gone to the United States and seen the economy? They're also complaining, by the way. They're also complaining. And as they're complaining, Europe is looking at them looking, eh, you think you're complaining. Our inflation is at its absolute worst. So why do we feel like it's such, such a pressing matter we must take to the streets? Why can't we maybe perhaps look at how other people are handling it in their particular areas before we start protests? Okay, Val, for your information, you've, gro you've brought a good uh, idea, mm. what I had in my mind. So to solve a problem or to solve the cost of living, you cannot just wake up as a president or as a leader and announce that today's sugar is at 50 shillings. Mm. It needs a long-term solution. What do I mean by long-term solution? That my child will not come and get the same sugar at 200 shillings now. Mm -hmm. So a long-term solution, for example, now, we need to generate our own things. Because as I've been viewing over the last month, uh, the cost of living in our country has gone high because of the exchange of currents. That one is a factor. I, uh, we tend to import a lot of things. That is a factor. Why can't we encourage our youths who are landed in the institutions. Mm. We come up with our own resources. We come up with our own things that we can run ourselves. Mm. That is when the cost of living for your information value will come down. Mm -hmm. And we need, you know, as I've said, you cannot just wake up and announce that everything is now at a flat rate. Mm -hmm. You see, we have debts that uh, they were borrowed in the last regime. How do we do to pay the debt? So we need long-term solutions. An example of a long-term solution is avoiding the debts mm -hmm. that we clear with the past, other than adding the debts in our country. Mm -hmm. Number two, we can measure in agriculture. Our country is based in agriculture. Mm -hmm. We can really measure and we shall get a lot of income through agriculture. Like for example now, we cannot complain the cost of living is high. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have people who are suffering. They don't have food. Mm -hmm. It is not the cost of, living, li cost of living that has affected them. It is they don't have. So we need to balance these two things. Mm -hmm. As a country, we need to manufacture our own things. Like, for example, now, fertilizer is something we can manufacture in our country. Mm -hmm. yeah? With the resources enough, we can do it. We encourage investors in our country. Because, like now, to say why is the country crying of high cost of living, mm -hmm. we are really working hard on paying the debts mm -hmm. for the last several years, and they are in, in billions. Mm -hmm. And if I put a question to you now, Val, mm -hmm. if you have a debt somewhere, and then you go borrowing another debt, mm -hmm. will you be sure that you'll ever settle? 
Mm. You'll not, definitely you'll not settle. Mm. For you to settle is paying and clearing all the last debts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that you can start now calculating on what you have in your mm -hmm. pocket or in your hand. Mm -hmm. So that is the best idea to me. Mm -hmm. Actually, the previous interview we were being told uh, financial liberation is actually first removing yourself from debt yeah. and then now moving on swiftly mm -hmm. and thinking about investment, savings, while exactly. all the while managing yourself yes. as a person. Mm -hmm. Now, as we wind this up, I don't know why time flies when we have wonderful conversations. I wanted to talk about the um, most recent parliamentary proceedings. Never a dull day in Kenya. Never a dull day in Kenya. So we have, um, and I'll start once again from the youth inclination. We have one, Joyce Osogo. This is a woman rep for Homo Bay, otherwise known as Ben Suda. Eh, my voice wants to go and ikienda kushika shweli. Came to represent women and youths, where as far as um, closing businesses was concerned, no one was asked to close their business because you know uh, the vice president asked all the businesses to remain open, yes. and you know business is to remain as usual. But the ripple effect was people did close some of their businesses. I don't know if it was for fear of, of being looted or something else. So, and she also said that the protests were intended to be peaceful, but the presence of now police with now the tear gas and all these things changed the fact. Do you agree that they stopped being peaceful because of the presence of all these things? Mm -hmm. I don't agree. Mm -hmm. You know, Val, first let me begin by saying uh, youth plays an integral part in our society. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been some people gargaging the youth leadership and saying, oh, you know, the youth does not have that experience needed. They do not have the so on and so forth. But I want to tell you this. In as much as the youth may not have that experience needed, they bring in fresh ideas, mm -hmm. fresh minds to the table. And on the issue of the throwing of tear gas mm -hmm. to the youth during Mandamano, it cannot begin, you cannot see a police, police force mm -hmm. coming if you don't use force by yourself when, when doing demonstration. Mm -hmm. You know this just like action and reaction. You throw a stone as a policeman, I must take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I must also throw tear gas so that I can disperse you. You know you cannot threaten the life of police to be in danger mm -hmm. when you throw him a stone mm -hmm. and he just sees you like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. But I believe if this whole idea of demonstrations would have been peaceful, mm -hmm. no throwing of stones, no burning of tires on the roads, mm -hmm. I don't think there would have been police. Mm -hmm. I really doubt if there could have been police. But now tell me, mm -hmm. a person has come with a sack. Mm -hmm to your shop mm -hmm. and raids it. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely, mm -hmm. we are human. Mm -hmm. You will do nothing about that. Mm -hmm. And you will indeed require a police force. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had some youths uh, cracking a joke and saying, mm -hmm. oh, you know, tomorrow is Monday. I'll be in near Naivas with a sack. Mm -hmm. But you see, that's uh, the whole idea of this. Mm -hmm is that youth space in our society, they want to showcase themselves. Mm -hmm. You see, we are the ones there. But if you do that, you will not stop a police mm -hmm. from defending the owner's property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And what do you think of the same? If you're just joining us, by the way, we are mm -hmm. on the recent parliamentary proceedings where we had the woman rep for Hama Bay, mm -hmm. that is Ben Suda, where she claimed that the protests were intended to be peaceful, but the presence of the police now throwing tear gas and all these things changed that fact. And she even went ahead to say, well, she was walking, to, she was war white, first of all, I think, to signify peace. And then she moved from this point to, she, I think she mentioned Kibra as well. She mentioned various um, other places. Says, do you, in fact, believe that her statement is correct? Let me add something before. Oh, sorry. Oh. That's okay. Before yeah. we get to him. Uh -huh. Before. You know, Val, sometimes we cannot pretend to be visitors in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> I'm sure, let's have a honest discussion. Mm -hmm. You've seen somebody throwing a stone to a policeman. Mm -hmm. Will that policeman keep quiet? Mm. 
will he stop from firing his bullet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, mm. that's the discussion we must have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> uh, for your information, mm -hmm. Val, mm -hmm. it is very incorrect for a leader mm -hmm. or a person in quotes of a leader mm -hmm. to say that the presence of a police is the cause of insecurity. Mm -hmm. That is very wrong. Mm -hmm. That person does not understand the law. That person does not understand the workforce of the police. Mm -hmm. Because I believe in this, whenever there is a danger even now, the first person you'll run here to protect you is the police. Mm. So what should I say also, also, our police are trained. And I believe they are not trained to be goons. Mm -hmm. They are not trained to be hooligans. They are civilized. They are civilized persons who are trained. Mm -hmm. They know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Then I go, I go for this reason now. Mm -hmm. We have our Nanji, let me put in quotes, one Nanji. Mm -hmm. They have come for a privilege in the demonstration. They have not really come to demonstrate about the cost of living. Mm -hmm. Many have come to loot. Mm -hmm. Many have come to cause chaos. Because if you find somebody carrying a old billboard, mm -hmm. carrying a old sign, a, a, a road sign, mm -hmm. what is, is it a demonstration? Mm -hmm. How shall we end this uh, rampant demonstration in our country? Mm -hmm. Because I believe in civilized countries mm -hmm. outside there. Mm -hmm. Their demonstration is very peaceful and very unique. They'll only march to the streets singing, mm -hmm. but you'll never find them uprooting mm -hmm. or removing items which, which they are, they are privileges, mm -hmm. which they were put there under their tax. Mm -hmm. So in Kenya, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. We need to train, and moreover, it affects our youths. Our youths need to be trained, uh -huh. need to be encouraged to go to education, that is to go for education, uh -huh. because a person who is educated, you not find him in the streets. For example, take a percentage of those people who are demonstrating there and do the calculation of those who are learning. Uh -huh. You'll find those who have not gone to school, they are the majority, uh -huh. or they are at the forefront. Uh -huh. Why? They don't have in mind that destroying something mm -hmm. or pulling out something that could be a privilege for them, mm -hmm. burning road uh, tires on the road, that only wastes our transport system mm -hmm. where it could have generated a lot of income. Mm -hmm. For example, if you close now, this is our, our, our super highway, express highway, mm -hmm. for even some one hour or two hours. What impact will it have course, in terms of economy? Mm -hmm. A major one. Mm -hmm. People had to close their shops because they don't trust their, our uncivilized people. Mm -hmm. So we need to be civilized. We need to be learned. If I can use example for my case, mm -hmm. I'm in school, mm -hmm. I'm in college, I'm educated. Mm -hmm. For me to go to the streets and pull out things, that is not the best way. Mm -hmm. You better even stop eating for your side mm -hmm. that I'm demonstrating. Mm -hmm. Because the hunger is high, so I'll not eat this hunger, let it stay until it comes down. Mm. That is the best way. Mm -hmm. But you cannot go, you are saying, I'm demonstrating because of the cost of living is high, yet you are looting the unga from your friend. Mm -hmm. That is not the right way for our country. Mm -hmm. We need to be civilized. Mm -hmm. We need to, if, I know demonstration is part and parcel of us. Mm -hmm. It is even allowed, mm -hmm. but a peaceful one. Okay. The one that can involve even marching to the parliament just without destroying anything, mm -hmm. without causing harm to your neighbor, mm -hmm. without causing havoc, without causing tension. So our police are very okay in terms of security. Mm -hmm. They come and even guard us and protect us and protect even the resources that we have. So for a person to say that our poli the presence of the police is in security, I bet that person has not even learned in this country. <laughs> All right, so now as we conclude, I want to touch on the, I want to say the most comical part of the parliamentary proceedings, which is the exchange between uh, Kimani Ichungwa and Melio Diambo. But this is more Melio Diambo speaking before Kimani Ichungwa had a time to rebut. So I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't really, I don't really know how to explain it to you if you haven't watched the video, but basically she was... Um, she was address, addressing Kimani Chungwa on the fact that he keeps bringing out the former president's uh, name and uh, accusing him of things or, you know, 
as as the story is going. So Milio Diambo just went ahead and said that, that you should maybe tell us if you're part of the LGBTQ plus community because of the way you are so perpetuated on this particular person. Just help us understand is this why you... So um, my question is, is it a joke now? Is it a joke in Parliament now? And meanwhile, the youths on the ground are really getting hurt and are really running or you know doing all sorts of things. Is it now a joke where it's supposed to be quite serious in Parliament? What's happening there? In as much as we respect the two leaders, mm -hmm. Milio Diambo and Kiman Ichungwa, both of them are two legislatures who can articulate their issues very well. And uh, when they go to the house and start throwing tantrums on each other, mm -hmm. that to some extent is a disgrace to the youths. Mm -hmm. You know, each one of them is trying to outsmart the other. Mm -hmm. We know Kimani Chungwa may be bitter about Ur Kenyatta, mm -hmm. the former president, and Emilio Diambo may be defending the former president, mm -hmm. Uru Kenyatta, which actually is accepted mm -hmm. in our democracy of speech. But the youth outside here are saying, when you take a space in that parliament, mm -hmm. never even at a given point waste a chance. Try to articulate the issues of youths. Mm -hmm. Try to use that platform and say, the help has delayed. Mm -hmm. Try to use that platform and say, comrades are dying of hunger. Mm -hmm. Try to use that platform and say the university school fees have been raised in nearly all the universities mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And in these coming few weeks, we might see a spike. Mm -hmm. So the youth, to some extent, may be bitter about them. There are some youths who will not understand that each of them was trying to pull on their side to protect their leader. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, the youth are suffering out there. Mm -hmm. And even the comrades of Kericho County and all the universities with which I represent, mm -hmm. they are very bitter. They are saying they need the money. Mm -hmm. And these legislatures, whom we respect them very much, should use that platform to air out the views and issues of comrades mm -hmm. in that parliament. Mm -hmm. In as much as we have youthful leaders mm -hmm. in the house, we say again they are not enough. We want in the next coming elections, we want majority of youths to flood that house. And most mm. people will be in for a rude shock because the nation we are moving forward, it's going to be a youthful nation. Mm -hmm. In as much as there are very many barriers that may be hindering the youth, you might have societal norms, you are being told, or oh, you are not married, can you marry first before running for a seat? Mm -hmm. You may not have that political godfather. Mm -hmm. You may not have resources. Mm -hmm. But in these coming days, you will see the youths flooding the mm -hmm. parliament. Mm -hmm. And they will air their views right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you, sir? Uh, Val on my side. Uh -huh. uh, I think life skills and communication skills should be brought back to our country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Irregardless How of diplomatic. the position you are, <laughs> why should I say so? Mm -hmm. People are no longer intolerant of one another nowadays mm -hmm. just because they are missing something. I, speaking of those legislators, legislators now mm -hmm. representing us in the parliament, going to a side of being a chaotic or causing some fight, I call it a fight, mm -hmm. that quarrel, mm -hmm. and yet it is on a live TV. Mm -hmm. Children are, uh, children are watching, mm -hmm. youth are watching, our parents are watching. Mm -hmm. So that means there is no more tolerance among ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to return life skills. We need to return communication skills. Mm -hmm. Because I may end up speaking something, and you get it in another version, and you end up talking on me in a high temper. Mm -hmm. You see? So the temperament. And I know I say this, when there is uh, no humbleness in a person, mm -hmm. that is where the quarrel and fighting will start. Mm -hmm. But if two are quarrel quarreling and one is humble, definitely it will end there. Mm -hmm. So for example, having our legislators there fighting in that manner, I call it that is a competition. Mm -hmm. Who is greater, who is 
eh, if i can put in that language of comrades ubabe kushindana ubabe mm-hmm. like ah you know me ndio mm. no we need our legislatures to be tolerant to one another mm-hmm. we need them to speak to one another why should they be called mushimio or why mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's why i'm saying they return communication skill mm-hmm. first or kuja wafunzo hear the word why mm-hmm. yeah? because i'm supposed here on the ground to respect you but if you are uttering words that does not have respect in any manner mm-hmm. i'll end up even calling you by your name i'll not start wow. even by mushimio mm-hmm. you see and moreover we continue with this that is always the start of violence mm-hmm. and start of like things you see now as demonstrations mm-hmm. But if there is dialogue if there is humbleness between our leaders mm-hmm. if there is a good way of like exchanging not even exchanging exchanging is a bad word like <coughs> sharing an idea mm-hmm. you see there will be no any quarrel there will be no you can see in some parliaments there was some fight mm-hmm. you see and that is very unfortunate what is it showing us with the coming leaders mm-hmm. but i want to say this also I think it is because the youth we have become many in the world. Mm-hmm. Therefore like you see we occupy many offices. We are now the majority in parliament. Mm-hmm. So like we are you know the youths are fond of we are active. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. So I can say that is just the effects of us youth. Mm-hmm. So us like for example I'm a leader in my own institution. I need to be trained to be humble. Mm-hmm. I need to be trained to communicate well. And to add on that, and if I can say if I was the president, mm-hmm. I think I will impose a rule on any vulgar person that speaks vulgar mm-hmm. and he is called by the word moshimiwa. You get a suspension. Mm-hmm. Why in institution we go for suspension wow. for speaking uh, vulgar? Mm-hmm. Like for example, I'm the president in Arvist. Mm-hmm. I can't go to the administration and start like Mr. Principal you are so stupid. Mm-hmm. Eh? There is nothing you tell me. Mm-hmm. I'll get a suspension definitely. Mm-hmm. That one should be introduced in our parliaments. Mm-hmm. Whenever you speak of a word that is not right, should be sent home for mm-hmm. some few months you miss the salary mm-hmm. and a person will come back a real leader will come back very humble. But a rude one mm-hmm. will come back and continue being rude and the more suspension that person the will get. Yeah. Become. So we need to impose a rule. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. It's at conclusion maybe you can tell us something. Well. Mm-hmm. What I can say is mm-hmm. we as youths mm-hmm. in the 21st century. Mm-hmm. And specifically the comrades. Mm-hmm. And I also all the youths maybe in Kenya, Kericho County, Rift Valley. I want to urge them and encourage them that let's take our space. Mm-hmm. In each and every sector be it elections be it studies be it where mm-hmm. let's be outstanding even in the coming elections mm-hmm. let us see youths mm-hmm. flooding majority of seats mm-hmm. and uh, i want to encourage the youths that they should not be afraid of anything and in any case it is said we can choose to live by fear mm-hmm. or either being freedom mm-hmm. Yeah, but I urge them we go for freedom. Let's not be afraid of anything mm-hmm. in as much as it's something that's good for the building of our nation. Mm-hmm. And let the youths not be taken for granted by anybody. Mm-hmm. You've seen all the leaders trying to pull on their side, all the youths to their side, but this should not be taken for granted. Mm-hmm. Youths must take their space equally mm-hmm. in each and every position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. All right, sir. What Good I have pleasure. to say, Val, mm-hmm. is that first thing or the first uh, op- uh, uh, opportunity to take mm-hmm. is we the youths getting learned, getting education. Education will make us more civilized. Mm-hmm. Why should I say so? After somebody has undergone education, whether he is employed or not, definitely you have the skills. And that's why I comment on our president that is Dr. William Samoy Ruto. He came up with the technical institutes, mm-hmm. technical learning whereby you learn technically. You can learn and then maybe you then to get an advantage to be to be in a job somewhere, mm-hmm. but you can start your own through the skills you have, the technical skills you have. Mm-hmm. When we'll have those technical skills, 
I want to promise you, there will be no demonstration. Mm -hmm. There will be no high cost of living. Mm -hmm. Because everybody will be engaged. Everybody will have money. Mm -hmm. The problem that is bringing high cost of living is that some have money, mm -hmm. some and majority do not have. Mm -hmm. That is now what is bringing the differences. Some are learned, majority are not learned. Mm -hmm. Because if you see in hardworking countries like China, they are better. Mm -hmm. Because at least there they are impacted in skills. Find a small kid making a wristwatch like this of mine. Mm -hmm. That is a self-employment. Mm -hmm. That is an earning. So whenever our country will come to earn, like at a personal level, mm -hmm. Whenever our country, all of us will come to an engagement in work to do, definitely there will be no time of demonstration. Mm -hmm. There will be no time of shouting high cost of living mm -hmm. because everybody will have that capacity he's occupied, he or she is 